Okay, hello, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for having me, I'm excited to be here. So I was already introduced and I also work with Dr. Jordan Greenbaum at the Stephanie B. Blank Center for Safe and Healthy Children at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. And so today I'm gonna to be speaking with you a little bit and highlighting some of the reasons that might explain why parents or caregivers might abuse their children. And so often you hear that question asked and there's no one reason why this occurs. It's complex, there's a myriad of reasons. So so what I want to do is kind of share some of the common things that have come up. And so how I'm going to frame this presentation is I'm going to share with you, one is just some what the general population actually thinks about why uh, parents or caregivers abuse their children. And then I'm going to share with you some of the things that we've seen as child welfare professionals and that have been constant in the research and literature. And then I'll also share with you some of the perspectives from actually offenders themselves so we can kind of gauge that and put that together. So one, I went to social media and I just asked people, why do you think that parents abuse their children? And I thought this was important to actually find that perspective because these are just general people in the population. These are their perspectives. And also there are many parents who may abuse their children who they're not thinking that they're abusing their children. So they're considered a part of this population too. And often they might think, oh, it's those people, it's these other people. So I compiled some of the things that people said, and so here are some of the reasons that they said why parents abuse. So due to environmental stress, uh, due to drug use, PTSD, low self-esteem, a history of domestic violence or abuse, unrealistic expectations of child development, conflict with that other person or anger at that other parent, uh, stress over finances and low income, and poor coping skills and being able to deal with anger. See, these are some of the reasons why the general population thought that parents abused. And what was interesting, there was a parent that I want to share that responded, and she was actually a survivor of child abuse. And here's something that she said. She said, I'm a parent and a survivor of child abuse. That type of behavior is learned. When that is the only way you know how to solve a problem, that is what you do. You live what you learn. I have tried very hard to break the cycle. I can honestly say I've never abused my children. It takes learning new methods of coping and finding ways to deal with your anger. So I thought that was an important perspective because she lived through this and then she too is a parent and she recognized that she went through this behavior and she could use that for parenting. So she has to try very hard not to go back to what she learned as a form of abuse. So, now I'm gonna to touch on sort of some of the common factors we've seen associated with child abuse and maltreatment. And I love coming after Judge Walker because she mentioned a lot of the things that we've talked about and touched upon. And I think some of them we know. So I'll briefly kind of go through different factors under these different domains dealing with caregiver factors, family factors, child development factors, environmental factors, and some cultural factors. So first with parent caregiver factors. I think psychological well-being was definitely touched on is very important. If there's a parent is dealing with mental health issues, there could be low self-esteem, depression, a belief that things are beyond their control, all this is going to affect how they parent and if they become frustrated or if they're quick to anger. So these definitely have an influence. And that history of abuse I think we really touched on and that's, that's a learned environment and that could be what they know and that's how to parent. And also, in terms of substance abuse, which I think was highlighted too, your mind is altered and there's different things that occurred when someone is under the influence of substance abuse. And then this knowledge of childhood development, which we also touched about as well, and of many, very many parents who abuse their children, especially physically, they have these unrealistic expectations of their children and what they're supposed to do, whether it's inappropriately you know, spanking or abusing or disciplining a six-month six child because they can't walk or a one-year-old because they're not potty training yet. So just knowing that, that very simple developmental factors is key. One, family factors is another. So family structure can also um, be a part of what may explain why a parent or a caregiver may abuse their child. So again, poverty can be associated with a lot and it's that high stress level. And that might also cause families to be more abusive or more neglectful, especially if they have several children in the household and they're really trying to make ends meet. 
And then also marital conflict or conflict actually between the two parents. So there could be issues there where instead some of the issues are maybe being taken out on the child or there's not, there's disaccord between the two parents and that could affect their parenting of the child. And that's slightly different from domestic violence where there's actually an abuser in the home. And the one who is actually being abused might not have the you know, the skill set to be able to properly take care of their child, or that child as well might be a product or be involved in domestic violence too. And then stress. But with stress, especially if all these other different factors overlap, it's the ability to cope with stress and deal with that. And that definitely leads to more aggravation, it being easier to just snap or be upset at different things that a child or youth may do. And then this other one is um, parent-child interaction. So this in terms of there's, there's parents that might physically abuse their child, but they're less warm, less affectionate, so they're less likely to award them for positive behaviors and look at negative behaviors more and might discipline them, discipline them more harshly. And so this can also lead to frustration and sort of how they might parent and be more likely to abuse. Next domains is child development factors. This is slightly different than the different child development levels, and this is more some things in terms of age, like children at different ages might be more prone to different types of abuse. So again, younger children, especially if there's not that knowledge of development, especially the babies who might be crying. We talk at the center about the period of purple crying between like a newborn and a couple months where they might not be open to being cared for or, you know, hugged or touched and they cry a lot and a lot of parents don't know that and they might get frustrated about that. And then as children get older then they might be prone to other types of abuse such as sexual abuse or things around that. And then seeing more of abuse of children with disabilities. So some parents they might have a disabled child and of course that child cannot function as, you know, as other children who may not have disabilities. This can lead to frustration and also some children who are disabled who are abused, they might not know that they are being abused. They can't speak up or have a voice, but then that's a stressful environment. It could be on the parent. And again, some of that goes back to coping and some of these factors, you know, play into each other. And then this last one is sort of child temperament. And really it's the parents perceived child temperament. So there are some who think, you know, their child might have behavior problems, but they think of them as a bad child and they need to be disciplined. And so that might lead to them being more frustrated with them and the inability to really emotionally connect with that child because they perceive them as a sort of bad child. <clears throat> Environmental factors and other factors that can come into play. So we talked about poverty and unemployment, and again, these are stressors that can build upon each other and make it more likely or easier you know, to um, abuse a child. And also, this whole notion of social isolation and social support, so not having that support system. So especially if parents are dealing with these different stressful issues, not having a good support system in place can also um, affect that and affect their parenting and make them, again, more likely to abuse when they're not feeling that. And there's other parents that that's a key thing that's been prevalent. And then just this issue of it being in violent communities. So communities of violence, they too are associated with poverty and high rates of unemployment and also that could be more prone for a child to be involved in uh, physical alterations and physical abuse or just those, again, those issues that can lead to a more hostile environment. And then lastly is these cultural factors. And I think Judge Walker also touched beautifully upon this when she brought up that example about the parents who did not want to give their child a blood transfusion because these cultural values, there's attitudes, beliefs, practices, and customs that people, they're not thinking, oh, like this, I'm abusing my child, but this is what I believe in. And so there's this notion between like what is abuse and what is discipline. And so there are some practices that are accepted culturally that these people, they're not considering this abuse, but it might be seen as abuse on the outside. And so it's a really sticky slope to look at. So those are hard to deal with as well, and as well as looking at different religious beliefs. Okay, so now what I wanna do is share with you is some of the words from other offending parents and them going back and thinking about and speaking about some of the reasons why they have abused. Okay, so one, this is a father who physically abused his children. And he said, my father was the boss in the house, and this is how I was taught things should be. So sort of that learned abuse. Okay. Next, father, sexual abuse. I'm worried about myself because a lot of people say I did it because I was abused. 
I did it because I was angry and I wanted to take it out on them sexually. I did it because of this. I did it because of that. I don't understand that. I just felt like I wanted to sexualize them. By sexualize, I mean just get your rocks off or whatever in a different way, a sexual high. So this, he had um, children ranging from six months to seven years old. Next one, another father, sexual abuse. I need a fix because I was feeling crappy. Maybe I didn't get the contract I bid for, or my wife and I had a fight about something where I'd rather go spend some time by myself, but I can't. My relationship with my wife was so difficult and so complicated and arguments and the whole deal. How can I tell my wife I want to be alone? Next from a mother who physically abused her child. Nothing else I do works. He doesn't listen. I tried other forms of discipline and I just get so angry because nothing works. And then finally, another father, sexual abuser. The only time I really felt good was when I was acting out sexually. It was safe for me. It was like everything around me was so dark. I wasn't getting any good feelings from anywhere. I had convinced myself that I didn't deserve them. No one really knows me. They just know the image. They don't love me. They love the facade. I just felt miserable. So just from briefly hearing those, are there any sort of wor words or occur reoccurring themes that anyone heard in some of those? Low self-esteem. Anything else? So I picked apart some of the words that just kept coming up. And we can kind of tie that back into what we just talked about, right? So I was taught, I was abused. So we can think about that cycle of abuse that they came from. I was angry, I was feeling crappy. So again, sort of that coping and um, dealing and being angry. I had a fight. My relationship was complicated. So thinking about that marital conflict or that conflict with that partner, he doesn't listen. You can kind of think about that with sort of that child temperament and perception of the child being this bad child or the only time I felt good. So again, that low self-esteem. So those are some of the things that we hear as they talk about reasons why they abuse. We hear that and we see that in some of the things we just talked about. And I think even the general population, some of their comments too are kind of reflected in this as well. Yes? It seems to me like maybe even a larger theme there is like the inability to put someone else's feelings in the Yes. Right, so it's very self-focused. Yes. So what I need and what I was feeling and what yes. Was yes. Yes. years that I ran a drug treatment agency in New York, one of the groups that we had to run was a mandated group of child sexual offenders mm -hmm. um, incest. And almost what we found that almost all of them were under the influence of alcohol mm -hmm. or drugs when they committed the incest, the sexual mm -hmm. abuse. That was not always the case in physical abuse, but most of them felt that they would not after they came to in a group they would talk about the difference and then how bad they felt that they then might yes. fight and physically abuse. So there was that cycle, as you talk about um, that, but it was very, very, the most difficult ones were the ones where it was truly an, an incestuous relationship, the father and the, and the female child, or the male child. Yes. Yes. But the abuse level, as, as Judge uh, Walker talked about earlier, most were under the influence. And it didn't matter the socioeconomic. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. the other piece that's so important here is socioeconomic does not over, overlap. Mm -hmm. This is. You know, addiction and abuse is equal opportunity. It's not more poor people. Mm -hmm. I had as many people who were middle class and working corporate jobs as I had of somebody who was living in poverty. Mm -hmm. So that, so these areas impact our entire um, mm -hmm. community. And we need to we need to be aware of that as well. This is very helpful. Absolutely agreed, and that's why I said it's a myriad of factors, it's not just one. We tend to sometimes think it's low-income, uneducated populations, but that's just not true. So I also thought it was powerful.